Hey there, my name is Provis, and welcome to High Rise City! From the name alone, you can probably guess that this is a new modern city builder, and you would be correct. But this game is more than that, it takes heavy inspiration from games like Anno, and as a result, there are a lot of production chains that you need to manage in this economic simulator. If you can build up your production and distribute it properly to your people, you can make something absolutely massive. In fact, I think this game supports something like 40 million inhabitants at a maximum. That's obviously pretty huge, and I can't say I've ever gotten close to that so far, but we will get as far in this video as we can. Developed by 4XO Entertainment, this originally was the project of one developer for seven years before it picked up a team, went through early access, and as of today on September 4th, the game is going into its full release state. And as a result, the publisher is sponsoring me today to take a look at this game and show off everything it has to offer, which obviously I'm very grateful for. If as you guys watch this video, you like what you see and you want to learn more, then of course there will be that link in the description down below, and I I would encourage you to click on that. Now let's go ahead and start up a new city. Now when you are building your first city, you have to first choose a starting location, and there are a few real world places you can choose from, such as Cape Town in South Africa, or Naples in Italy. I'm going to play in Vancouver in Canada, because that sounds very picturesque. I like the idea of spelling new like this, let's go ahead and call this New Provsburg, and I think that's going to work out just fine. And here we are with our small spit of land. Don't worry, we'll be able to expand this rather drastically later on, but for now, this should be plenty. All right, in the very top left, you're going to see our money and our population, which is currently zero. Also, some research points. We'll come back to that later. And here in the very top, you're going to see some important resources, tools, planks, and insulation material. And if I click on this drop down right over here, we should be able to see that there are a lot of other resources to consider. And this list is going to get a lot, lot, lot bigger as the game progresses. These are things we're going to need in order to build some very basic structures, and if I hover down here at the bottom with my mouse, we see a lot of different building menus. The first thing we need to do, of course, is place down some roads. So I'm going to go ahead and do something kind of like, I guess, this. That should be fine. And maybe also separate out a couple of small blocks. That should be enough to get me started. All right. Now, if you want to place down some zoning, you can do that similar to other city builders, but what they represent is just a little bit different. Instead of placing down just generic residential zoning and then commercial zoning and people go find their own jobs, you need to think about what kind of employees you want to work in various different industries. So, for example, the first thing we have access to in this game are craftsmen. Craftsmen are your lowest level workers. They can do some very basic jobs and they're very cheap zones. Does cost me some planks and insulation material, for every one of these I want to place down, and we're not going to get much in the way of taxes, but the productivity we get out of them ends up being worth it. So we'll go ahead and place some of these down, and you can see my materials are starting to go away. Let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit real quick. We're going to wait for some of these buildings to get complete, and I will show you some of the new menus we need to worry about. There we go. So right now, House Rimmer is very, very unsatisfied. They don't have any electricity or water. Garbage is okay for now, but that's going to change. They have enough fish for now, but that's going to change. And they also want some vegetables, healthcare, and and some basic shopping services. These are all things that we can and will provide for them. Let's go ahead and take a look at supply and energy, and I want to place down some small wind turbines to start us off, because obviously we are going to need to provide some power, and it's all I've got access to. I'll place down only one over here for now, that should be fine, and we'll let that start to construct itself. Similarly, we can go ahead and go to our water and place down a water tower, let's say right over here. And this is where the water is going to come from. We need to take the water pipes and then go ahead and create some zoning kind of like this to make sure that all of the houses are going to have access to water. But this isn't going to do me a lot of good until we also have some power. So let's wait for that windmill to finish up real quick. There it is. So now we need to find a way of distributing that power over to our people. We can see that we don't have any sort of electrical substation nearby. Let's go ahead and click on supply again, and we can see that these are the substations. This giant yellow radius right here represents the electricity that will get distributed. So I'm going to go ahead and place one right over in this direction. And I don't know if it's totally within range of the turbine right off the bat. It looks like it is. I don't need to have any of these high voltage pylons. But that is something we could do. We could click on these and we could drag them out like this. But if it's not an issue, then we're not going to worry about it. So power has now been restored to the water tower. And the result is that now everyone's got their water. Satisfaction has gone up. But there's more that we're going to need. Let's go back to supply and get some health care. I will place down a doctor's office. And I'll also place down some quick shopping in the form of of a supermarket. 
So with all of this done, we should be taking care of most people's basic needs. Now we just need to worry about things like garbage and consumer goods. But before we even worry about that, I'm going to start running out of things like my planks and my insulation material unless we take some steps to get around that. So I think the next thing we do is start setting up some very basic production. There's a lot of trees over in this general area, and that makes sense. I mean, it is Canada after all. What we can do is extend some roads over here and then go to building materials. This opens up some new production chain menus. I need lumberjack yards. Place these over here where there's plenty of trees and a lot of efficiency, so something like this will be fine. We'll place down, let's say, two of these to start us off, and they'll start chopping down trees and creating logs. The logs will then get converted into planks over here at a sawmill. So I'll place one of these actually kind of closer to the center of town. I think the proper way to do things is to have resources generated far away, brought to one giant central location, and then distributed into something useful. So let's kind of create like a little industrial plaza over here, I think. I'll do something kind of up over here like this, I think. This should be fine. So one sawmill gets placed right along here, and that's fine. We'll probably add in a lot Game more of these safe. later on. But once these things are constructed, they will need some workers, which we can now provide with these craftsman zones. And then they'll be able to start producing some resources. Now, the problem is this is not enough by itself. The resources need a method of getting from point A to point B. That means we are going to need some carriers. If we go over down here, we can select some local carriers in the transportation menu, and this radius shows how far they are able to work. So I'm going to place down, let's say, one of these for now, though we're probably going to need a lot more of them later on. Get this sucker properly built up, and it's going to have a handful of different trucks that work over here. Okay, so there we go. And with the trucks, you can see that right now only two out of the six are being used. They're going to travel up over here. They're going to pick up some of the logs that are currently being generated by my workers, and they're going to bring them back to the carrier facility, at which point they can then get distributed to the sawmill. Hence why I like placing my industrial refining buildings close to the carrier so there's not nearly as much travel time. There are other things we are going to need over here, of course, though, so let's go ahead and place down some additional roads. I'm thinking we want to start getting ourselves some insulative materials. So let's go ahead and just try to break the mold just a little bit, and we'll do something kind of like eh, this, I guess. This will look kind of all right. A little bit weird, but that's fine. Let's go back to building materials, and we want to do this. Now, this requires that we place down a hemp insulation farm. Farms in this game are uh, placed by using loops of roads to kind of section off an area for farming. So for example, I cannot place a hemp farm over here in this little block, it's already taken up with other stuff, but an empty segment of road like this, well, I can place down a hemp farm. Or the same thing could be true right over here, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. Let's place one like so. This area is now claimed for farming purposes. And as long as we've got enough workers to go over here, and we do, then our carriers should be able to work and take this area. So cool. Now we're able to start producing some of our own planks and some insulative materials. That means we can go back to our zoning and continue to grow our population base. There we go. Plenty of resources starting to come in now. That is fantastic. So let's go ahead and get our garbage taken care of. Uh, kind of like everything else with the carriers, we are going to need some people who can collect garbage, and then we need a place to dump it. I'm thinking we can just simply place down a quick little local garbage collector, let's say right over here. And it does have a very long reach. You can actually extend that reach a little bit, kind of like so, just extending or contracting the radius, which is helpful in certain cases. But generally, the larger the radius, just the more of these trucks you're going to need in order to cover a larger area. It doesn't always work out for you. Anyway, we'll have this taken care of, and then I need a place to actually place my garbage. Takes a bit of money and some planks, but we'll do something kind of like this, and that should be fine, at least for now. Now, on the top left, we are working towards some milestones, which we actually just met. I was trying to get up to 750 craftsmen, which we did. Actually, it says 739, but I think that it's recalculating a couple of things. So, because we are now a settlement, we have access to new things. We have offices, which require some bricks to construct. We have fruit farms, clay pits, brickyards, and some larger wind turbines. All right. Now, the thing is, once you have access to new buildings, your people have new demands. So if we click on House Sims over here, we can see that they are going to require some fruit, as well as the vegetables that we still have not provided for Game them. Safe. Let's go ahead and fix that now by clicking on Industry over here, and we can start getting some food. So I'm thinking we get some vegetable farms, let's say over in this area, and a fruit farm over here. Never mind, we can't. That also takes some bricks. Fair enough. 
All right, we need to get some bricks up and running. I will come back to that in just a moment. First things first, I do see that we need to get ourselves some extra water, and that's going to have to go over this direction because, unsurprisingly, farms would like to have access to water. I also think we need to get ourselves some fish. So let's go ahead and extend a couple of roads over in this general area, kind of like this, and then we'll go ahead and get ourselves some fisheries, and we'll place down eh, one, and then, I don't know, two, or something like that. That should be enough for now. Fish does get used up fairly quickly. Quickly. Is this still in range of my carriers? The answer is a resounding no. So we are going to need to get myself a fresh round of carriers. Let's say right over here. That's fine. Okay, now we're producing some fish, we're producing some vegetables. Yes, we're missing some fruit, but this will solve a lot of itself in just a little bit. So now we want to start getting some bricks. That's a new building material to worry about, and of course that means we need access to some clay. The clay pit is our friend, and oh, lo and behold, all of the clay is over Why here in this corner. Fish. Let's go ahead and place one of these down right over here. I think that's going to be fine. And we will unfortunately need another fresh carrier over in this general vicinity for this to work. But with that taken care of, let's go ahead and get myself at least one of these little brickyards. And I think we also need to get myself another one of these small electrical substations because at the moment, uh, we're not covering anything. So we'll do something like this. And once this gets built, I hope that's good enough and we don't need to construct any additional pylons. Yeah, it looks like we do need to do that. Darn it. All right, fine. That's fine. That's fine. Let's go ahead and go back to the electricity, and we'll go ahead and snap on some of these pylons, kind of like so. And they're going to have to go across some of the fields. Is simply placing this close to the um, uh, wind turbine going to be enough? It looks like the answer to that is no. Could be wrong, though it actually looks like it messed up a few different things in terms of power. Hold on. We may just need more power in general. Let's place down a medium wind turbine in this area as well. This does have some noise pollution associated with it, which is why you don't really want to place it close to all of your population centers. Oh, and purely by accident, I have grown enough that we have reached the next tier. I am a valley, which gives me access to some public transportation, new forms of power plants, which is nice, as well as police stations, fire stations, and churches. Guess what that means? Yes, new needs. If you click over here, they have additional services required. That's completely reasonable, though. Let's go ahead and place down a small little fire department and cover that area. We'll place down a small police department. Never mind, I don't have any bricks. All right, we'll worry about that in a second. Well, how about that clay, then? Are we actually making any progress? It looks like we are producing a tiny little bit of clay. I can send a truck over here to go ahead and pick this up. So one truck is on the way. We should see this person's going to pick it up. There goes the clay. And it'll get delivered over here to the brickyard just so we can get this going. I only need a handful of bricks. Dang it. There we go. We have at least a couple of bricks. All right. So the only reason I want bricks at the moment is so I can start placing down some office complexes. Because a lot of our buildings, including things like the brickyards and stuff, are going to require some office goods. So what I can do is place them... Let's say over here, probably, in a relatively uh, unnecessary and unnice part of town, I guess. I don't know. Offices don't have nearly the same requirements as your residential zones. It's okay to place these around, let's say, your air pollution and your noise and stuff like that. That's probably the better way to go. Keep your residence nice and insulated. Use your offices around the outskirts, and that'll work fine. Now that we're producing about, looks like, 24 or something office services, we should see that those needs for things at the clay pit is going away, which means the efficiency just jumped back up. So by spending a small amount of bricks, we're now boosting up our brick production rather significantly. Which means I can go ahead and get myself that police station we were talking about. Hooray! And also, let's try to go ahead and get some religious services with a church. Dang it, need two more bricks. Oh, and let's not forget we also wanted to get some fruit farms up and running. I'll do something kind of similar up over here. There we go. All right. So now we should be able to meet all of our residential needs as long as I continue to expand all of my services as we grow our population zoning. Now, you might think that we are slowly bleeding a bit of money. The best thing to do is to continue growing out your tax base, right? Well, that is certainly one option, but alas, basic craftsmen and office zones don't really produce much for you. This is a game about production. Trade is going to be key for you. So what we would probably want to do instead is start setting up some ports and see if we can start exporting any excess goods. Let's go ahead and do exactly that. I'm going to place a quick port over in this general area. Once again, does create a fair bit of noise pollution, but as long as we keep this as an industrial and commercial area, that should not be a problem for me whatsoever. 
Okay, so we can click on this over here and now open up the trade menu, and from here I can start selling some goods. I'm going to sell off any excess planks and insulation that I am providing. So I want to say we want to maintain a minimum of 50 of both resource in our bank, all right? Because right now this is set to a standing order. Whenever we are over 50, we are going to sell the excess, etc. We could just make this a one-time thing until a certain trading limit is lead, uh, meets, and then the trading order goes away, but I'm not worried about that right now. For now, let's just enjoy a little bit of extra cash by selling excess goods since I'm filling up my warehouses anyway. And as a result, you can see that we are now going back into the green. And now, as our population continues to grow, we are a small village. This unlocks a very important aspect of the game, too, actually. So we now have access to credit. Actually, I think we may have had this last time as well, but it's expanded a bit more. And this is great if you find yourself in a situation where you need to take a loan. And there's actually a very good chance you're going to need that in this game. We also now have access to missions. Missions are something I think you could easily overlook, but you would be a fool to do so. When we get a mission, we have to accomplish a small goal, and that's going to give us some efficiency boosts for different uh, industries. The more efficient you are, obviously, the better across the board. Not to mention we now have access to new types of zoning, unlocking the next class of people, so no longer simple craftsmen, but actual employees with larger apartments. Parks, elementary schools, sheep and textiles, furniture, recycling. Yeah, all of this is important. Oh, and the almighty bank. So we can take advantage of those loans. That said, I'm not too worried about that quite yet. I want to continue building out the same industries I've already got. So even more of my brick production would be nice. Let's go ahead and boost that up. Actually, that's a little bit close to some people, but eh, I think they'll be okay. And then over here, let's go ahead and start selling off on any excess of this as well. I want to have a lot of money makers, but also plenty of resources to go around, all right? I don't ever want a deficit, but I want to have lots of money. There's now a lack of fish. Well, gosh dang it. Fish, for some reason, does get consumed rather drastically in this game, which I really do not understand. You see, I grew up in uh, Arizona, all right? I grew up in a desert. I never developed the taste for fish because I wasn't exactly around all the time. So to me, it's disgusting, but here, people love it. I do think, though, we should go ahead and expand out a small recycling center. Ah, but this is going to take some tools. Dang. Small recycling center will take some of the garbage we currently have piling up and turn it into some surplus logs, which is not a bad idea for me. Let's go back to that trade menu and start buying some tools up until we have, let's say, 10. These are very expensive. So this is probably where we're going to start biting a bullet and find that our money starts to plummet. Yeah, ouch. Okay, that's going to cost me a fair bit. Fair enough, fair enough. That sucks. We'll be all right, though. What are some additional industries that we could work on? Well, I wouldn't mind getting myself some of that furniture we have been looking at earlier, and that's a new industry down over this direction. Of course, I do need even more wood production, so let's go ahead and get myself another one of these lumberjack yards, like so. Maybe two of them even, I don't mind. And then down over this direction, we will place down another furniture factory. Hmm, let's say one, two over here. That'd be fine. And you know what? For the heck of it, maybe we also just get myself another one of these sawmills. We're going to need more workers, though, and this is a great opportunity to jump into the employees zoning. So let's go over this direction and start placing some of these down. These will be my proper apartment buildings. We should see that these things are going to be a lot larger, but by having some employees, the demands go up rather drastically. So they have needs for extra goods that our regular craftsmen don't. That includes spices, which I don't even think I can grow right now. I think we'd have to import that. Textiles, furniture, which I'm trying to produce now, education, and some leisure. Well, 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 I should be able to deal with at least some of that stuff. Let's go to the skewers. We'll place one down over this direction. And then right next door to that, we can go ahead and place down, let's say, a nice little playground right over here. There we go. All right, so that should at least bring their satisfaction up to a reasonable rate. And I feel pretty good about continuing to expand this. We'll need some more offices to go alongside all of that as well, which I don't mind doing. Let's place some of these down like so. And we also should probably get ourselves some special government buildings. Wouldn't mind getting, let's say, a town hall placed over here. That could be good. And we probably should place down the bank just because you never know. It looks like we're going to be running out of money pretty soon. And I don't mind taking out some loans. That's fine. But we need the bank present in order to do that. Do we have an excess of any other materials? We actually have a pretty huge excess of some furniture. Wouldn't mind selling some of the excess of that. If we want to expand the amount of trading we are able to do, we need to build out more of these ports, which is a little expensive, but uh, c'est la vie, I suppose. Unfortunately, every additional port only adds in one additional trading slot. They kind of all link together. So you'll end up needing an absolute ton of these by the time that the game is out. 
Still, that extra slot can be valuable. Furniture, if we have more than, let's say, 30 of these, we go ahead and sell the excess and enjoy the cash. And a lot of cash did we enjoy. That barely puts me back into the green before I had to take a loan. Oh, but that was short-lived. Okay, we're back into loan territory. Let's open up the banking window and we're gonna borrow about $50,000 at a 5% interest rate. Does cost me an extra $100 per week, but you know, that's probably fine. If we can at least get our production back on track, then eventually we will get out of this hole that we've created for ourselves. Again, with the lack of fish? Good gosh, why do you guys like fish so much? Disgusting fishy stuff. Whatever, anyway, we're now a village. <laughs> This actually is also a really important milestone because now we have access to the research center. This is gonna take a lot of bricks and a fair bit of tools, so it's gonna be kind of expensive and I'm not in the best place to deal with this right now. But with those research points that we so far have not been using, we will be able to improve our city in some way or another. Oh, good lord, it's gonna take way too long to get enough money to do all this. Fine, fine, I'll just go ahead and just buy a bunch of tools. Let's make sure we have up to like, let's say 25 or so. That's gonna cost me a lot of money. So guess what we do? We go to the bank and we say, hey, can I borrow some money? And they're like, sure. You've got an outstanding credit report or something, probably. Oh, and we are back in debt. Again, of course we are. Why wouldn't we be? That's fine, let's borrow some more cash. Can't possibly go wrong. Hang on, pause for a second, please. Um, can we take a look at our budget and see what's going on over here? Well, let's see. We're expending a fair bit of money on things like some food and furniture and stuff like that. I'm surprised. Trading. Yeah, it was the buying the tools. Buying the tools is what's currently killing me. Unsurprising. Well, let's see if there's something we can do about that. Opening up the brand new research center, we have an access to a whole new menu of stuff. We have missions that need to be completed, such as getting a certain population, taking out loans, building certain things, blah, blah, blah. I'll go ahead and collect all of these research points. And using these points down here in the bottom, we can see that there are things that we can do that are gonna make our lives a little bit easier. So for example, the construction cost of uh, building out new zones and stuff, reduce that by 20%, definitely good. We'll go ahead and pick that one up. We could also make all zone construction costs reduced. Sure, that seems kind of useful. Reduce air pollution. Nah, I like it when people have air pollution. But what about the traffic lights being more intelligent? Everyone hates traffic. Let's go ahead and build that out. Reduce the road maintenance cost. I could see that being good. Increase our trading capacity, the number of stops and buses. Every carrier has extra trucks. Well, that'll be useful for sure. What about reduce their maintenance costs? Sure, that all seems good too. Uh, increase productivity of all farms. Fish have extra workers, but they have extra productivity? Sure, that solves a problem since fish apparently has been in gross demand. Anyway, there we go. That's all 10 points currently taken care of. We have a lot of other missions that need to be completed, but the more of these you do, as you can imagine, the more efficient your uh, city is going to become in some way or another. Oh, we finally have some missions. Okay, this is really important. If we can construct a new furniture factory, we're gonna get some improvements that we are looking for. So let's go ahead and do exactly that. Happy to pay the price of admission to do one more of these furniture factories, especially because by placing this down, getting an upgrade for lumberjacks just means more lumber. More lumber means more furniture, means more money. I'm happy. That works out fine. So the task is now complete. And if we come over here, we can click on these and then upgrade them. In this case, only cost me 80 bucks each. That's practically nothing, so I'll go ahead and do that for each of these lumberjacks, like so, and then get each of these closed, and we should see we get a nice little 20% uh, efficiency boost on our lumberjack. That's great. What are some other things we should start getting? How about some textiles? I don't mind the idea of starting to produce some shirts, even if I don't end up giving it to my own population, and instead I decide I'd rather sell off the excess that could still be worth a bit to me. I'm gonna do some weird shaped stuff. Whenever I'm doing farms, I just like having weirdly shaped roads and plots. I don't know why. Somehow it just feels a little bit more realistic to me. Anyway, we'll place down a nice little sheep farm over here. Of course, I need tools and I barely don't have enough. What gives? There we go. We'll place one of these down over here. Okay, and is everything still in range of my carriers? Because I'm getting the feeling that no, it no longer is. Right, that means we should probably go ahead and get ourselves some more. Wow, that is a lot of sheep, by the way. Look at all the sheep! Look at all those chickens! Does anyone even remember that video anymore? Is that still relevant? Am I young? Am I cool? Well, if we're gonna be getting some textiles, I do need to start importing some dyes, because right now I don't have a way of producing that. So we're gonna buy up to, let's say, 30 colors, 30 dyes. And then under our industry, let's go ahead and open up that textile factory. I'll place a couple of them over here. 
course, that cost me a lot of money and say goodbye to all my cash. Alrighty, that means more loans. Overall, I think the economy is looking pretty good, but there are a few things I'm missing. And the real big money killer for me right now is probably going to be things like the tools. What if we go ahead and buy out some land? And you can do this, you can see here there are several different zones we can choose from. Uh, every zone is going to have a different survey of resources, so depending on what you need, that kind of determines what you probably ought to get. Like, limestone and lithium seems cool and all, but probably is not what I need. This land, on the other hand, has a decent amount of some coal, some iron, and some copper ore. That could be kind of good for me. No iron over here. Lots of clay, and that's about it. This seems like the winner. Let's go ahead and purchase this land. Another mission. Ooh, this one's gonna be fun. We have to transport some goods. Okay, this is where I now get to jump into a car inside of my own city, and we have to go and deliver some stuff. Good news, there's zero collision, so you can go screeing right through things as much as you want. I'm a terrible delivery driver, extremely unsafe, but who even cares? Hit all these beacons just like crazy taxi? <laughs> we should be able to get ourselves some sort of a reward. You have a certain amount of time to do this, though. The time is clicking down, so I got four more stops to make ah, in like a minute or so. Don't mind me, silly people. Get out of my way. Look, you can even drive through buildings if you want to. That doesn't even matter. The only stipulation is if you're going to be delivering stuff for 4XO delivery, stay on the gosh dang roads, all right, at any costs. Hooray, we did it! Zero textiles have been delivered? Question mark? Okay, that's fine. <laughs> Exit that, and we complete the mission, which means I now get some boosts for my furniture factories. Yeah, basically every time you get some sort of a mission, there's really no good reason not to just go ahead and do it. Those efficiency boosts should not be underestimated. By the way, are we producing textiles now? We are! Good, okay, so tell you what, if we end up finding ourselves in the rare situation of having a surplus of textiles, we can go ahead and start selling off the extra clothing, and since this does sell for 740, yeah, purchasing a ton of colors is gonna be expensive, but as long as we're producing plenty of wool, in theory, this ends up being a nice profit. It also means that satisfaction is through the roof. The only thing we're not doing is buying spices, and there's no way in heck I'm buying spices for people. Buy your own stuff. Anyway, where were we? Oh, right, we bought out a whole bunch of land over here. So somewhere in this area, there should be some iron. If we go to building materials here, we need to place down an iron mine, and it looks like all the iron is located up over here. Oh, of course it is, very far away. We'll take that iron and we can process it at a small iron melt, which gets me the bars I'm looking for. Now for that, we also need some coal, and my only coal option right now is charcoal burning. So we're gonna have to chop down some extra lumber, turn it into charcoal, and then the charcoal can get me some iron. Once I have iron, we can start producing some tools. Okay. Of course, this basically means we need to get ourselves a new mining town, which is going to be expensive and kind of unpleasant to work with, but it's all right. We'll start producing as much of this iron as we can. Let's go ahead and place down a small iron melt. They say small, seems pretty huge to me. And it looks like this is gonna create an absolute ton of noise pollution and stuff, which is just gonna suck, but... Oh well, tis what tis. We need some power as well. What are my other options? We could get myself a small solar power plant. Yeah, that doesn't seem like a bad idea, actually. Let's go ahead and do that. And we're now a big village. Cool, garbage power plants. Well, nice, we'll be able to take that terrible garbage and turn it into something useful. Uh, larger churches, wheat farms, bakery. All right, that's a new production chain for us. Lots of huge roads, which we haven't had to mess with yet, though we probably should. Ah, planning office. Increase the productivity of all industrial buildings within range. Now that could be useful. Let's see. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get myself some of those lumber yards I was talking about. I don't have access, unfortunately, to any iron. So we're just gonna have to make do without that. Um, I guess, I uh, can't really fit everything quite the way I would've wanted, but all right, a couple of lumberjacks over there will be fine. Plus, let's get ourselves that charcoal burner stuff I was talking about. Yeah, pretty heavy in the pollution. No one's gonna like this. And of course, we can't forget that we need to get a carrier. A big city carrier is probably gonna be the way to go because we're gonna need plenty of transportation trucks to get this all a moving. So let's see, I'm now producing some of those iron bars I was looking for, about 38 of those so far. Now we need to turn those into something useful. Let's go ahead and start producing some tools so I can stop buying the dang stuff. 
And now we are a small city. Okay, this accesses a few different things. Now we have access to even better zoning for engineers, because apparently engineers are the highest echelon of society. At least they are here. Better office complexes, more uh, things for electricity, shopping malls, biogas plants, brewing our own alcohol, a courthouse, and that's going to let us get some laws up and running. Out of curiosity, what do engineers need? Let's go ahead and zone a large area right over here. I'm expecting some nice, big, honking buildings. Oh yeah, they're looking pretty tall over here. Oh my. Here we go. Okay. Oh, and this apparently triggers a event here. A skyscraper. Is it magnificent? Oh, well, it's not quite a skyscraper. Well, just don't tease me like that. Come on. All right. Big apartment complexes. Oh my, do we need a lot of things. Right. We need bakery goods. We need beer. We need toys. We need better fire protection and health care than this. Yeah, these engineers are not feeling very satisfied. Oh, we have to go transport some more goods. That's totally fine. Load me up into a truck. I'm a professional. Woo, airtime. That is a terribly constructed road. All right, I need, to, I need to call somebody about that. Look at all this traffic. All right, actually, we may need to do something about that in a little bit. Get out of my way, you stupid plebs! I've got a load of no iron ore at all, actually, in my um, storage banks that need to get delivered. Also, please get me back onto the road. Please, 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 thank you. Good lord. Look, it's harder to control this dang thing than you would think, all right? First off, we're going really fast. And secondly, um, every tiny little pothole in the road makes this thing careen out of control. It's fine, though. I'll just take a shortcut. Boom, boom, bada, bada, boom, boom, boom. Ah, no, I missed the target. <laughs> Get back in there. Get back in there. I've only got four seconds left. Ah, okay, we got it. We did it. Nothing was delivered. But for our reward for our efforts, the vegetable farms just became more efficient. Hooray. Now, we are definitely starting to have some traffic issues in a few places. If I click on some of these roads, I should be able to upgrade them to, let's say, some four-lane roads like this which would not be a bad idea. I'd like to be able to help people start transporting between the two different areas of the city a little bit faster. Also, we should definitely place down a planning office, let's say over here, something that's gonna help boost up our productivity substantially. And let's also go ahead and start placing down some, how about mills or something like that, and then maybe some bakeries. And now we should be able to start producing some bread and baked goods, so that is being met. Okay, a lot more we'd have to do, of course. Beer, yeah, toys, yeah, we need iron, we need wood, we need a lot of different things. Okay, but, you know, I do think this is probably a good place for me to end. Obviously, we're not in the absolute best spot in the world. I do think that my budget could even out a fair bit more if I were to start selling off a few extra goods, like let's say some extra iron or start mass producing tools. Do that and I think we're gonna be okay. But the population's grown up to about 14,000 and you kind of get a good sense of all the different resources that get added into the game at some point. And we're still really only just scratching the surface. There's a lot more to be introduced as we continue to meet additional milestones. I just need 6,000 more engineers in order to make this work. The point that I'm trying to say is as you're going into this game, it may look like your standard modern city builder, place down some zoning and let things grow, right? But no, not really. This game really is a lot more like Anno than it is than City Skylines, that kind of a thing. Go into it with the expectation that you're going to be needing to produce lots of goods, as we are right now, and that is how you end up setting yourself up for prosperity and make sure you have plenty of money to go around for the rest of the game. Pretty darn fun, and I think, again, like the fact that I can have this much of an effort as far as like maintaining my economy at only 14,000, it scares the freak out of me to think of what 40 million people are going to be like, but the fact that that is an option is actually downright impressive. So once again, thank you to the publisher for sponsoring today's video and getting me an early look at this game. I certainly very much appreciate it. I had a lot of fun. And if as you guys watch this video, you like what you saw and there's more that you want to learn, well, then you can find that link in the description down below and I would encourage you to click on that. In the meantime, I would humbly ask that you hit that like button, leave a comment, subscribe, make sure you hit that notify bell, and I will see you guys next time.